is what we practice. So this sermon is not about making an argument for or against. But if after all you want to be a professor in the matter, so you can go and argue about the streets, you can take it after the sermon and give you more value. But today is just to lay the groundwork so that we can see this scriptural and therefore spiritual basis for it so that you can desire it as that which is meant for you by the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And you can walk in it and be edified and we the church properly shall also be edified and the name of the Lord will be praised. Praise the name of the Lord. So the four Bible scriptures written about speaking in tongues. In no particular that they, because the origin of speaking in tongues started in the Acts of Apostles. So the first verse or the first scripture reference I'm going to use is Acts chapter 4 verse 4. There the scripture says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in all that tongues as the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, gave them utterance. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus speaking prior to this death of Acts of Apostles, he says, And these signs will accompany them. Some translation says, We follow them that believe or who believe that in my name they will cast out demons and they will speak in new tongues. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, we are in number 3 now. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not unto men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit, or in the spirit realm. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number 4, reference of our scripture. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, it says, If therefore the whole church, that is in a corporate worship setting, comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders are all believers enter, we may not say that you are, you are out of your mind, with your mind. Number five, Bible reference, Acts 19 chapter, sorry, Acts chapter 19 verse 6, and when Paul had laid hands on them, this we are some new believers that Paul ran into in Acts of the of Apostle chapter 19. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Number 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. To another, the walking of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits, some translation called the serpent of spirit, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So this scripture is letting us understand that speaking in tongues is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, alongside the interpretation of tongues, so speaking. Number 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30. Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? So here we see gift of speaking in tongues being put in the same grouping as the gifts of healing or in comparison or in the same setting as the group. Number 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have you not love, I am a noisy dog or a chain clanging silver. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This verse of scripture lets us understand that speaking in tongues is denoted as the language of angels. Praise the name of the Lord. So speaking in tongues is denoted as the language of what? Angels. Amen. Amen. Number 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says, Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13, 
we are not by learning and spiritual reference. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. Number 12, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So this lets us understand that speaking in tongues is done with your human spirit. It is not done with your intellectual faculties. It's not done with your mind. We are doing with your mind. That is an imitation. That is a copycat uh, version. Praise the name of the Lord. It is done with your spirit mind, not with your intellectual mind. Hence, why you pray in the spirit, your intellectual mind is unfruitful because it's wondering what about your dream. Number 13. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18 says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So, Apostle Paul here is boasting of his gift and his attribute and practices of speaking in tongues. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if Apostle Paul would make that boast, then it is not the out of place for us to aspire to make a similar boast. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me as you wish. Number 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 9 says, Nevertheless, in a church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in trouble. Number 15, 1 Corinthians 14, 22 says, Thus, thoughts are a sign not for believers. But for unbelievers, why prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers? So, we are not a sign for not for believers, but unbelievers is the mystery of tongue speaking. When unbelievers see that this is not a language that can be learned by human faculties, this is not a language that is teachable through schools or academia, it becomes a sign to the unbelievers. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is also a demonic speaking in tongues, and I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, you know, by faith I know that uh, none of you here has been to Baba Dawu, but maybe you watch uh, Nollywood, praise the name of God. If they go to Baba Dawu place, what does Baba Dawu do? He speaks in tongues. They call it incant incantation. That's what they do. They, they call it in that. That is the language of demons. Our own is the language of angels. Praise the name of God. They are the language of demons. There are places and quarters where they will be arguing up and down. Eh, speaking in tongues is not this, it's not that. Those people that are arguing about, ask them to go and argue about incantation. They will not argue. Why are they arguing them? Because anything that is of God will be attacked. So don't let them shortchange you. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not let them shortchange you. In fact, every magician, even the ones that appear in the retail God talent, or appear in the hand of God's talent, when you see them on God's side or others, they make a champion. Every magician, they make a magician. In fact, the summary word that they use is from the edition of Abracadabra. Because when we are small, they just say Abracadabra. Praise the name of the Lord, that something will happen. Amen. So it has gone into English dictionary that when we are just saying something, they say the one is there. Although our president wanted to invent it only from Abracadabra to blah blah blah. But uh, that one has not got to where it is. It is the name of the Lord. Uh, the Guinness Book has not captured it. You know, Guinness Book, they are bad Nigerians because they started looking for who are wanting to kill, do kissology, kissing for 48 hours. The other one wanted to do so. They, they have told me, say, no. Don't do it again. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Number 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. The scripture says, if any is sick in a tongue, let there be only two or a close three, and each in tongue. This is talking about public orderliness in speaking in tongues, and let someone interpret. Number 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39. 
So, my brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. This is not an advice. In fact, it's an injunction, it's a commandment that the pastorate, the leadership of the church should not forbid speaking in tongues. And there are many ways you can forbid people from doing something. You can forbid them by denying them the knowledge that they are entitled to do. You can forbid them by not teaching them how they can assess that belief. And we don't want to be a branch, let alone a church, where you are denying what is yours in Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to equip you with it by knowledge and understanding so that if you choose not to use it, excuse my harsh language, your sin will be on your head. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In fact, many, many years ago, when I was really born again, one of the things I used to do evangelism because I saw in the book of Ezekiel that if you are asked to call them to honor and you refuse, if they sin, they will die, then your blood will be on them. So all the people I knew that were my friends, I went and told them about Jesus, and I told them, now nah, your blood will be on your head. Praise the name of God. And that's why most of them didn't like me. I told them that. Praise the name of God. So some of you that are refusing to tell your neighbor about Jesus, when they die, their blood will be on your head. Amen. That's why for me, sometimes when I pray in my prayer, I, pray, I used to pray, Oh God, cleanse me of blood guiltiness. Because you can be guilty of people's blood without knowing it. You can be guilty of people's blood without knowing it. May we not be guilty of anyone's blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you have siblings that have not been done about, just tell them, it's not you that will convert them. That one is the work of the Holy Spirit. When you tell them, finish. If you are the ones that need the good awakening call, then you let them know that their blood will be on their head. Finish. Okay. Number 17, or number 18. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, The one who speaks in a known tongue builds up himself, but one who prophesies is built up the church. So, speaking in tongues is for your edification. Prophecy is for corporate edification. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you ask me, I will not give up my personal edification for anybody's corporate edification. But fortunately, you can do both. Praise the name of the Lord. And God enjoins us to do both because as Christians, we are selfless people. We are selfless world people. And you cannot edify corporately if you are not edified personally. You can't give what you do not have. So if you are not personally edified, you cannot edify corporately. So you need to edify personally. You read the Bible says us that speaking in tongues is one of the ways we can be personally edified. Then you can desire the higher gift of prophecy so you can corporately edify. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number 19, Acts chapter 10, verse 46 says, For they we are hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. So the, the public we are hearing them. Number 20, Acts 2, 11. Both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. Number 21. And at this time, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. Number 22, Isaiah 28 verse 11 says, For by people of strange lips and with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to his people. Praise the name of the Lord. This was a prophecy of Isaiah concerning the speaking of tongues. We became fully revealed and manifest in the New Testament. Jude, Jude chapter 1, verse 20. Jude has only one chapter. Jude 1 20 says, But you, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. So this is a synonym. So speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit, 
praying in the Holy Spirit, these are synonyms of the phrase speaking in tongues. And we will explore that as an actor. Number 24, Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings to the for words. Amen. These are the 24 verses. But now let me address some misconceptions that some of you may have had here and there, especially in the wider body of Christ or in the apostate circles of the world in which we are. Amen. To address that, I'm going to use some hypothetical questions. What is the difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues? Amen. Now, to help us, and you will hear me with this, I have been speaking in this so far. Yes or no? So, I speak in English. Yes or no? I speak in English. Amen. And I'm speaking in English as far as I can understand. Amen. Now, when I speak to you as a person, or I speak to you as a church, or I speak to a human body, the English people or the English language will say, I was speaking to them, or speaking to her, or speaking to him, or talking to her, or talking to them, or talking to him, yes or not. Good. Now, when I speak to God, or I talk to God, what is the correct word for that? Let's clap for myself. Clap for yourself, that is not bad for the yourself. Amen. You see, the things of God, when you have the revelation, they are simple. But when you don't have the revelation, you will find even people with PhD tripping over themselves and making all kinds of confusion because they are trying to understand spiritual things with carnal mind, irrespective of how educated the carnal mind will be. So, that gift of tongues, when you receive it, and those who have received it, when you use it to talk to God, you are praying in tongues. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But now, if you feel or find yourself predisposed or perceive that you are going to speak in tongues to me, or to him, or to her. You are not praying in tongues, you are speaking in tongues. Now, when you speak in tongues in interhuman relationship or interhuman audio conversation, the Bible says there are conditions. The conditions are the person to whom you are speaking must be able to understand you. That tongue you are speaking to them. If they don't understand you, shut up. That is the Bible position. Because somebody now who is a Chinese, knowing that I don't understand Chinese, cannot just come here and he or she can speak English and continue to talk to me in Chinese. Now somebody is going to look at him and ask, Is he okay? Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. So the scripture says in Corinthians, and that's why our children have read us. Now, if, you are doing, if you are speaking in tongues to one believer or to believers, accept the understanding, stop. Or accept there is somebody gifted with the gift of interpretation of tongues to translate what you are saying, stop. Is that clear now? Why would then somebody speak to another person in tongues instead of English or Hebo or Yoruba or French? Now, the gift of tongues for those who have it and exercise it, because it is the language of angels, the realm of God can use that connection of that language to bring information into that speaker. 
And then that speaker will speak it as a relay to the church or to a group of believers. So that speaker man is standing in the role or office of prophets. So he received that information in angelic language or in tongues. So he now relates it in tongues that has he has received it. But for that thing to have any applicability or any intelligence, the Bible says somebody with that gift of interpretation to be able to say, hey, that's what one is saying to the church. It becomes then a prophecy, prophecy in the name of the speaking of tongues, interpreted by a common meaning. That is one. Also, some people who speak in tongues have also been endowed by the Holy Spirit to interpret the tongues they speak. So they can receive that information from God and some of you, and I will encourage you who watch particular men of God, watch attentively. You will see them and I will, I will have to give you an example. Uh, Bishop Oledeko, you will see them. If you, are, if you understand. They will speak in tongues as they are moving in their preaching. When they finish, the next thing they are going to say in English is the interpretation of that tongue. They are not going to tell you now I'm interpreting, no. But if you know them and you understand the flow of their preaching, you will know that the next thing they are saying is an interpretation of that tongue they have brought. Praise the name of the Lord. But there are other fathers in Christ and fathers in the Lord who don't have that dimension of gift. It doesn't mean they are less than others. Those ones pray in tongues. They don't necessarily prophesy in tongues. They can prophesy directly by English without having to translate from angelic language to the other language. So that is speaking in tongues is for relaying information from heaven to a human vessel to the congregation. The Bible says if you are doing that, it must be subject to an interpreter who can interpret it, or you yourself interpreting it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are asked when you use that your language to pray to God, it is not subject to interpretation. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Let's look at that. Uh, chapter 14. Look at it. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth you. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries? So when you're praying in tongues and you know that's what you're doing, and you know that your neighbors are about you, you know that you are praying to God, it will be wrong of them to want to interpret what you are saying to God. Why do they want to interfere in your transaction with God? There is no biblical reason for them to interfere. And there is no biblical reason for any person in authority in the church to interfere with your prayer. Except if you are praying too loud to the start of that people in which you should be conscious about as a human being and you know, do something ethically and other. So praying in tongues is not subject to interpretation and is not to be interpreted. So if you run into some misinformed, underinformed, or whatever Christians and they say, eh, there is no more thinking tongues because you are saying things that people that don't understand. It's not meant for you to understand. I am praying. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm not praying to you. The person to whom I'm praying understands me. Even if I myself does not understand what I'm saying, my spirit man understands because he's spirit to spirit. Amen. So those are the decisions, and the decisions are very clear in the scriptures. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. The requirement for interpretation, we find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. It says, Therefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. So, one of the confusions, probably for those who are sincerely in their confusion, is that they see speak, they see prayer, they see speak, 
And because they are used interchangeably, they are not the same when speaking may have been used interchangeably with praying, and therefore does not require interpretation. Praise the name of the Lord. So in verse 13, it says there is a requirement for interpretation if you are speaking, which means you collect from heaven, you are speaking to people. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Or from your spirit man, you choose to speak in tongues. It has to be interpreted, except the person you are speaking also has reason, the ability to understand it. Another requirement for interpretation is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30. Chapter 12, verse 30. The Bible says there, have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Which tells us there are segments of people with different gifts. Not everybody has all the gifts. Some have, some say, if they are apostle or I think they are apostle, they might operate in the night gift or whatever. But that's not the mandatory requirement. Yes. So that is requirement for interpretation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 28, the Bible says, But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let him speak to himself and to God. So if you feel that you are so much in the spirit and rightly so, nobody is knocking you for that because it's between you and God, and you are receiving inspirations and all that, and you are now bursting in tongues, and you think that is a prophetic inspiration, and nobody is able to interpret it for our benefit, and you yourself is not able to interpret it, the scripture says, keep truth, speak to yourself and to God. Let that which you have received be translated and digested by your human spirit for your own edification and for your own intimacy with God. Because there is no use speaking to us when we cannot understand Him. It's, it's basic common sense. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we understand that the distinction between speaking to man as a fellow human beings and speaking to God. When you are speaking to God, you are praying. You are praying in tongues, you are speaking to God. You are speaking to human beings in tongues, it has to be interpreted for their understanding and for their edification. So praying in tongues is not subject to intermediary or rogue interpretations, as we have seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, as well as Verse 14. In verse 14, it says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Praise the name of the Lord. And praying in tongues is deemed in angelic language, and we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse uh, 1, we have Apostle Paul saying this. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I am become a sin, sounding brass and a tinkling symbol. So, in summary, I'm praying in tongues and I'm laying this foundation because, like I said to us, there is an ongoing project where every qualified member and being qualified means you are genuinely born again. We do not administer, help, assist. Encourage anybody who is not born again to pray in tongues. Otherwise, you are making enchantments. You are speaking demonic language. And we give deliverance in this to clamp with them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, in summary, there are four types of tongues or four applications of tongues, if you like. If that makes it clear. Number one is when you Praise the name of God. When you use tongues as an actual prayer language, that's one application of speaking in tongues. You are using it as an actual prayer language. Another application of tongues is when you use it as a form 
of praise. Now, quickly, let's see. So, you can pray in tongues, you can also praise in tongues. Have some of you seen some of these uh, gospel singers, the good ones? Have you seen them inside their gospel? Sometimes they go into the name of the Spirit and they are praising in tongues. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you can praise in tongues. As the Spirit gives you utterance. Amen. I want to find the scripture that says uh, you can sing in the tongues. Uh, yeah, so you can. Anyway, so that is the, the, the third dimension of application of tongues is tongues which requires interpretation for public prophecy and public and public ministration. That is the thought. Then there is a fourth, if you like, type of tongues. is tongues as foreign languages. Tongues as what? Foreign languages. This was what happened in the Acts of Apostles. The tongues that the Holy Spirit gave them was tongues as foreign languages. So people that we are of other nationalities, other tribes, or whatever, Within hearing this and say, Oh, I hear you speaking in a uh, Swahili. The other one said, I can hear you speaking in Igbo. Ah, they speak. Because all these people, they are true. Ah, they speak in different languages. So you can also receive tongues. And this is most common with evangelists, especially evangelists that go to missions in Igbo areas. It has been reported even in contemporary times. The Holy Spirit can give them tongues as foreign human languages. So they can go in, in an enclave that is maybe Chinese or Swahili or whatever and they have never learned that language. In fact, I was a man of God who never learned English. It was when they did a God of that they could speak English. Without having going to school, they learned it. So the Holy Spirit can be this, this is probably to give you tongues as a foreign language. So that is tongues of human language dimension, which you are not learned and which you did not even know. In fact, I was a woman, there was a man of God, he spoke in tongues, and somebody in the congregation says, You are speaking my native language. He himself didn't know the language he was. So you can speak in tongues that are human languages. And as our church diversifies, diversifies to include other nationals, don't be surprised that one day you might just be speaking in tongues. And one person will just be staring at you like that because they can be what you are saying as related to their own human native tongue. So there are four dimensions of tongue. Tongues as foreign language, which means human languages. Tongues as prayer languages. Tongues as a form of praise. And tongues as a way of prophecy. Therefore, requiring interpretation. And if you are real, you, I will desire this one and even ask for, for Jara on top of it. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says the desire of the righteous cannot be got off. What we need from, from what we hear from God is usually our desire and our sin and our faith. And faith is a compound word because faith is based on your knowledge. If you don't have knowledge of certain things, you might not be able to trigger faith in that dimension. Praise the name of God. Faith is also based on your hope. If you don't have hope for something, you might not be able to trigger faith. I hope that serves us well to lay the format and the ground for the project of Holy Spirit baptism and evidence of speaking in tongues. I call it a project because the picture I see. It's like that man at the pool of Bethsaida. Jesus says, you want to be him? The man says, ah, I'm not very native. See, when the angel moves, he didn't know he's talking to the, to the Lord of the angels. Praise the name of the Lord. So he's not indicating the best way to own the angels. Who knows how the angels go? In fact, who directs the angels when they move? So he said, when the angels move, it's only that time that if somebody jumps inside, you will get it. I have no person to take me there. That was all the answer to the question. The question he didn't ask him, why have you been here? He said, Do you want to be healed? Praise the name of the Lord. And we are 